Okay, if you're using intermittent fasting, you're not stuck with just plain old black coffee during your fasting period. In fact, there are actually 10 things that you can add to your coffee and still not break a fast. And that first item is cream or half and half. In fact, that's actually what I have in my coffee right now. Getting a little too low for my liking. And I know this is always controversial because it is technically a food. You'll see people say, and probably in the comments of this video, that it's never allowed. It's a food. Of course you can't have it. And if you are trying to maximize autophagy or if you're fasting for religious purposes, then yeah, heavy cream or half and half will break a fast. But if you're looking to minimize the insulin response, which is our storing hormone, and achieve more of a fat loss or weight loss goal, then about one tablespoon of heavy cream or half and half will not break a fast. Cheers to that. This is because at one tablespoon, it is mostly a pure fat source, so it's not going to spike the storing hormone insulin. Therefore, it won't shift the body out of a fat burning state. Which if you're new here, my name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. On my channel, I share with you the intermittent fasting tips and strategies that you can use to achieve your weight loss and wellness goals. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. And today's video is also sponsored by Kettle and Fire. More on them in a bit. Okay, the second thing that you can use is called L-theanine, which might sound a little weird, but I'm gonna grab it for you so you can check it out. Okay, so ignore the fact that I'm wearing sweats, life of people only seeing me waist up. <laughs> L-theanine is often used to help with anxiety and to help better manage stress. It's an extract from tea. In fact, I used to take L-theanine quite a bit when I was really struggling with anxiety, but you can also add it to your coffee as well. And for some people, they said it can help to kind of like balance out the energy spike that they get from caffeine, make it so that they can have those like slightly increased energy levels, but not the jitteriness that can sometimes happen, especially if you're more prone to anxiety. And L-theanine will not break a fast. So it does come in capsule form for the most part. So if you are using it, then you will just wanna make sure that you open the capsule up and maybe just use one of those hand immersion blenders, like a zip zip, you know? <laughs> so that you just don't get like clumps of L-theanine in there. That probably wouldn't be fun. The next one is stevia or monk fruit. I also have some of this. In fact, I'm developing my own protein powder that's zero sugar and instead just uses monk fruit because stevia tastes gross in my opinion. And from what a lot of the community said, they don't really like it either. And if you are transitioning from having really sugary lattes and you need to have some type of sweetness in your coffee for you to drink it, these are really great alternatives to provide some level of sweetness without it causing that big insulin or blood glucose response that sugar has. Now I do caution against having these during the fast just because a small amount of it is so much more sweet than regular sugar. But I have found if you're using a lot of it, it can really increase sugar cravings. But if you're using a small amount and especially if you're just having it on the occasion in your coffee as a little bit of a treat, then it shouldn't be a problem. So we got monk fruit right here. I really should have been more prepared and had all of these next to me while filming. But the next one is cinnamon. I mean, cinnamon and coffee just go so well together anyway. But the devil's really in the details when it comes to something like cinnamon because it can start to add up in terms of the grams of carbohydrate and therefore it could have the potential to break a fast. But thankfully, if you just stick to around one teaspoon, then you're in the clear. One teaspoon is actually probably a lot more than you would think. You're very likely not using any we're close to that, you're probably just using a sprinkle. So especially when it comes to coffee, it's good to go. Just getting my steps in, let me grab salt now, which is number five. How many am I at? Probably gonna get like a thousand steps just from going back and forth. Okay, so next we have salt. So salt in cooking helps to bring out flavors. That's why usually salt is used, but it can also help bring out natural sweetness flavors as well. That's why you'll see salt used in chocolate bars, like chocolate salt truffles or something, I don't know. And because it has zero grams of carbs, zero grams of protein, it's not going to break a fast. Even for a true fast where you're not having any type of actual food sources, salt won't break a fast. And it can also provide electrolytes, which are often lost during the fast. I have a client who will blend his black coffee with salt and he swears by it. He said it really makes it a lot more flavorful. And we've covered a couple supplements that you can use in your coffee, but one supplement that you can't use is collagen because collagen does contain a high amount of amino acids, so it will break a fast. But it is a really great thing to be having during your eating window, especially paired with protein because it can help to increase satiety, help to make you feel more full and satisfied. And a great way to be getting a high quality source of collagen in is by using bone broth, like with today's sponsor Kettle and Fire. Kettle and Fire is made from grass-fed cows and it's simmered for over 20 hours to really pull out as much collagen as possible. And when you pair Kettle and Fire bone broth with other sources of protein, like if you're making a soup or a stew or a chili, it can help to really increase satiety and help to prevent hunger during your next day fast. I like using their original flavor, but especially when I'm making my bone broth chili, their chipotle beef flavor is amazing. In fact, they have a lot of other different flavors that you can test out too. So if you like to just sip on it during your eating window, you can experiment with a whole range of different flavors. I really should have been more prepared. <laughs> so you can see they have like a turmeric ginger option, which if you're 
trying to get more turmeric into your lifestyle, great way to get it in. Coconut curry, lemongrass ginger, and then of course my favorite, the chipotle beef. And Kettle and Fire is offering you guys 20% off plus free shipping when you use code AUTUMNBAITS at checkout. Definitely make sure you check out Kettle and Fire and get that 20% discount code. I'll have it linked down description below. Okay, the next thing you can add into your coffee, number six, is almond milk. And again, devil's in the details, it comes down to how much you're adding in. First, you need to make sure that it is unsweetened. If it's sweetened, it will break up fast. If you're sticking to around a third of a cup of almond milk, not going above this, then you're not going to start to compound on the carbohydrates and break up fast. So if you are using almond milk, just make sure you stick to around a third of a cup. Oh, we have the seventh is coconut cream. Now this is a good option for a plant-based alternative if you can't have heavy cream or half and half. So if you're using coconut cream, just make sure not to have more than one tablespoon so that you don't start to increase the carbohydrates beyond what will break a fast. Okay, the eighth option is vanilla extract. And this actually is such a sneaky hack, especially if you combine the vanilla extract with the heavy cream. It can taste like a vanilla latte. It's surprisingly really good. And if you keep it to one teaspoon or less, it will not break a fast. I even have a YouTube short video where I showed that I made my own zero sugar whipped cream from heavy cream and mixing the vanilla extract in there and then pouring the coffee in. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I'll also have the video linked down description below so you guys can check it out. Okay, the ninth thing you can add in is coconut milk. And this is coconut milk from a carton. So if you're getting the coconut milk, like the MYLK style, where it's made from blended up coconut shreds that have been strained out, then you can actually use up to eight ounces or less of coconut milk as long as it's unsweetened. Okay, and the 10th option you can have is actually some coffee creamers. Coffee creamers like nut pods actually don't have any grams of carbohydrates or any grams of protein, so it won't break up fast. But just be cautious because there are a lot of coffee creamers out there that are really high in sugar. So just make sure that you look at the nutrition facts, look that it has zero grams of carb and zero grams of protein. So you know it won't break up fast. You can also make something called keto coffee, which uses grass fed butter and coconut oil, neither of which will break up fast either. And it makes it a really frothy latte type of coffee experience. So if you wanna check out my keto coffee recipe, you can check out this video next. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.